we're focusing on the oil patch pain. You got some really bad. You got no good. You got very, very, very bad earnings season. So Chesapeake, uh, one really the epitome of America's shale gas fortunes is now warning it may not be able to outlast low fuel prices. And we just saw that the 2021 bond is now yielding 20 percent. Does Chesapeake actually survive? Yeah, I think that's definitely the question now. The reaction to the going concern warning the other day in the 10Q surprised me a little bit, um, just because the writing's been on the wall for this one for a while, it seems. But I think the, the declining leverage covenant really spooked a lot of investors. Um, and, you know, Chesapeake can sell off assets. That's something that they've said they're going to do. But the question is whether some of those assets, namely the Haynesville asset that they have in Louisiana that has been floated as a potential candidate for a sale, whether that can actually fetch anything at this point that would really move the needle for someone like Chesapeake that's just on the brink. Well, and let's get to that because you mentioned the 10K. So we have a quote that kind of shows that. So part of it is you have low oil and gas prices uh, hinder their ability uh, with their leverage ratios and debt covenants over the next year. And that is what's going to raise some substantial doubt about their ability uh, to actually continue and keep going. Uh, so I guess my question is, when do they have to pull the plug here? Like what other levers can they pull? This is not about their assets. This is about leverage, about selling something they may not have control over. Yeah, definitely. And I think everyone's keeping an eye on that because even like if you're a midstream company that you're serving Chesapeake's assets, you hope that they're able to sell something and that a producer will come in and be able to produce and fill those pipes like with volumes. But um, at the end of the day, that's not anything that we're able to see right now. So that's the really bad. Let's get to the guys that weren't as bad. And part of that is Pioneer. Uh, the other is EOG. So Pioneer is really the naysayer of shale's not going to grow that fast. Scott Sheffield, who recently took back over for the company, said, I don't think OPEC has to worry that much about U.S. shale growth long term. He only sees about 700,000 barrels a day uh, being added next year. Easy to say, though, when you're actually doing well in the shale patch when everyone else is struggling. Definitely, yeah. Pioneer is someone who's come out and cut their uh, spending guidance again, um, and that's something that investors have said that they wanted. Uh, but what's happened is a lot of companies cut their spending guidance, but then had to creep up above that, or they weren't able to meet their uh, production targets. So I think when you're someone like Scott Sheffield, you're really trying to raise the alarm to the fact that you're doing this right when everyone else seems to be struggling to do that, especially when you have a week where a name like Diamondback, another you know darling of the Permian Pure plays, had such a struggle. Yeah, I like that you brought up Diamondback uh, because they were one of the, you got Pioneer, you got EOG, Diamondback. Those are the ones that everybody loved, but they had some operational issues versus EOG also showed like, this is how you do it. You cut spending and you increase production. Yeah, definitely. And uh, I mean, in the long run, those will probably be the companies that are rewarded. Whether Diamondback, you know, they're saying that they're going to be able to come back from this, that this was a um, one-time thing, that they had a nearby operator who was fracking for too long and that that uh, interrupted some of their volumes. But they're also saying, hey, guys, we're going to have to bring down what we're expecting in terms of our oil cut. Um, and that even though analysts said that they were going into it with low expectations and that they were expecting a guide down, the, the size of the miss really seemed to surprise everyone.